Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Got a 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee, uh, 3.6 liter that has the eight speed transmission in it. And I'm gonna do a video on how to replace the transmission fluid along with the uh, transmission filter. All right, so the uh, drain and fill procedures for this eight speed transmission on these vehicles, uh, there's quite a bit to it. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and jack this up get my, all four of my tires off the ground, get it up on jack stands. That'll give me plenty of room to crawl underneath there, get that pan off, and then uh, gonna try to get it as level as I can as well. And uh, you'll wanna go ahead and uh, do this procedure at first with the uh, transmission cool. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start jacking up the front. Uh, gonna go pretty much as high as I can on each side here. And I'm gonna jack up right underneath the frame there and then if you can see it, there's a little arrow right here for the pinch weld. That's where we'll put our jacks down. So with the front end jacked up, I'm going to go ahead and jack up the rear end here. I'm just going to go right underneath the differential there. And then, uh, Jack it up enough to get the tires off the ground, and then I'll use a level maybe and see how uh, level we are uh, with the front there. All right guys, so with that jacked up here, I'm not sure how accurate this is gonna be, but I just got a little level here. I'm gonna go right underneath the body here, and you can kind of see we're pretty well level right where we're at. Um, it could drop down just a hair in the rear. So I think kind of where I'm sitting at now, we're good. So let me get my jack stand here. So just like the front, you got an arrow here on the back. Put your jack stand right here. So I think just like that, that should give us plenty. Because like I said, it needed to drop down just a hair in the rear here. Let me go get the other side and then we'll go ahead and lower the jack and check it again here. All right, so I'll go ahead and check my level again here. Like I said, I'm not sure how accurate this is, but we'll give it a shot. See right there, looks like we are perfectly level according to this. All right, so in order to get to the uh, transmission pan here, looks like we need to remove the skid plate here and uh looks like we got 13 millimeter here and that looks like the only one on the back side and then uh looks like two right up in there so let's go ahead and remove those real quick and actually it looks like we've got another one right here All right, so with that uh, skid plate out of the way here, as you can see, it's gonna be our uh, fill plug here, and then this pan has a drain plug, um, and then we got a bunch of Torx T40 screws we're gonna need to remove. But I'm gonna go ahead and drain it first, and then you can also read this here. Um, this is saying we need to check the level when the uh, temperature is at 86 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, so we need to remember that. Not sure if the new pan says that on it, but first let's go ahead and uh, crack open this fill plug here and make sure we can get this off before we do anything. And that's going to be a eight millimeter. And it looks like that comes loose here. And then I got a clean fresh drain pan here because I'd like to see how much comes out of this uh, just from draining it. Let's see if anything comes out when we remove the fill plug here. And you can see quite a bit comes out from there. So let me let that drain. 
All right, so as you can see, that's still draining out of the fill plug here. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and drain the, pull the drain plug as well. And uh, looks like that is gonna be a uh, 10 millimeter Allen there. So let me go ahead and pull that. I'm not gonna pull that all the way for now. Let me go ahead and just let that uh, drain and then I'll come back here. All right, so I'll let that drain for a little bit. It's still kind of going there. Let me see if I can go ahead and remove this the rest of the way. Like I said, I just don't wanna make a huge mess because I wanna see how much comes out of this. That way we can put the similar amount in. We'll go ahead and let that drain the rest of the way there. All right, so as you can see, that's pretty much done draining. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick this back in here so it doesn't drip all over me. And then uh, go ahead and grab your Torx T40 and we'll go around and grab all the uh, screws out of the pan there and then we'll drop the pan here. All right guys, so I'm gonna start out with the ones on the front. Those are gonna be the hardest to get to. And uh, I'm going to probably have to use, I can't use a socket because it's too hard to get in there. Uh, this cross member kind of gets in the way here. So go ahead and use my Torx 240 and let's go ahead and get these ones out. And then I'm just going to loosen these ones first and then uh, we'll pull them out at the end there. And these shouldn't be on here too very tight. All right, so this end one here, I'm gonna just pull completely it's so hard to get your hands and fingers up in there so like i said i'll just go ahead and remove it completely and i got all these loose um but i'm gonna like i said leave these ones in here and then I'll go ahead and drop the uh, rear ones here. That way the pan will kind of tilt downward, uh, but still be catching on these. So let me go ahead and get the uh, side ones done here. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and put just one of these back in right here, uh, just to kind of hold it, because it's kind of hard to get these back ones out here. So let me go ahead and get the, these other two out here real quick. All right, so I think that's all of them. Let's go ahead and remove this one that we put back in here. Again, have your drain pan ready. In case some comes off of here. Just like that. Go ahead and get this out of the way here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our pans. Of course, our old one, got your drain plug here, and then you got some magnets on the side and on the fronts. And let's take a closer look here. 
You can see there's a little bit on the magnets, but not too much. Uh, this vehicle, it is the original pan and uh, fluid, which has a little over 80,000. And Dodge and Mopar claim that this uh, fluid, you don't ever have to change the lifetime of the transmission, but I prefer to uh, change it out every 80,000 or so. And uh, as you can see, here's our filter. And now this is non-removable. That's why you got to replace the whole pan with it. Um, Dorman does make an aftermarket pan that has a removable filter. So you can just buy the filter if you want and replace it. Uh, I think there's another brand out there that does the same. But I prefer to stick with the OEM. And then you got a little O-ring right here on your filter. So you want to make sure that came out with it. Um, and then, of course, our gasket. It's all embedded in there. So don't have to worry about that. And then this is going to be the new one. Um, you can see our magnets there, right here. And then of course our filter, and then a new O-ring on there, along with the gasket. And uh, part number for this, 528543-4AB. Now this is a different part number than what this is, but the only difference is the uh, last letter. So it would be an AA, as opposed to this is an AB. So I'm not sure if they changed the part numbers. And uh, as you can see, this one does not have a drain plug. So I'm wondering if they just updated to where they got rid of the drain plug. But everything else on this matches up and it's exactly the same. And the only other thing it's missing is it doesn't have the uh, little sticker here on the side that shows you um, what temperature you need to check it at. So. I think we're good with this. Um, I did get this off of eBay. That was the cheapest I found it. I'll take a look again and uh, see if I can find the cheapest one and I'll put it in the description below. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get this one on. So before I go ahead and put my new pan on, I'm just gonna take some brake clean and a clean rag and I'll go around the gasket service real quick here. Just to make sure that's nice and clean there. Then go ahead and grab your new pan and uh you can see right there that's where the filter o-ring is going to go up into is that hole there so let's go ahead and get this up in here get it lined up and then you can kind of push up in that area right there where that filter o-ring is and then go ahead and get a few just started here to hold the pan up once you get those just started to hold it up i'll go ahead and move my camera and then i can get this drain pan out of the way as well and then go ahead and get the rest of your bolt started in here and uh we're gonna go ahead and just get them snug you don't want to tighten them too tight and then we'll try and do a torque on them it's going to be hard to do because you can't get a torque wrench up in some of these so you may just have to guesstimate on the torque all right so like i said I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these snug. Um, I'm not going to be able to get a torque wrench on these back ones. So I'm just going to guesstimate on all of them. Uh, but if you can access a torque wrench and get in here, it's going to be 89 uh, inch pounds. Um, and then I'm also going to tighten them. I'm not sure if there's a sequence to these. I haven't really looked it up. But uh, there might be a sequence on which ones you tighten first. But I'm going to go in like a star pattern. And then uh, that should work just fine. And then I'll do a final kind of torque uh, to where I feel 89 inch pounds is.
All right guys, so I got all those uh, torqued. What I felt too was 89 inch pounds. So now we should be ready to uh, go ahead and start filling here. All right guys, so before I go ahead and start filling, this was all the transmission fluid that came out. Also emptied the rest that was in my pan. I let that drain in here for a little bit. And then I got this empty five quart oil jug here. And then I'll go ahead and add and we'll see how much came out. All right guys, so as you can see, it's getting some air bubbles in there. And I spilled a little bit on the floor here. Wipe that up. All right, so if we take a look here, you can see quartz on this side. So it looks like we've got one, two, three, four. And then uh, looks like just a little bit over four quartz is uh, what came out of there so we'll go ahead and start filling and i like to just do that that way i can see how much came out and uh go ahead and use that as a reference kind of all right so really quick here to show you what i got uh, i'm gonna be using the mopar eight and nine speed atf part number six eight two one eight nine two five a b and uh went ahead and got a case of six of these plus an extra quart so seven quarts uh, which they sell on Amazon, so I'll put a link in the description for that. And then I'll be using this little uh, quart size pump, which I'll stick down in there. That way we can just pump that up into the uh, fill hole there. And I uh, got this off Amazon too, so I'll put a link in the description for that. And then also, guys, I just noticed this on the box here. So I'm not sure if this stuff expires or what, but you can see it says used by May 2025. So that's kind of weird. All right, guys. So we should be able to go ahead and start filling here. I got a clean drain pan here, a smaller one. And I'm going to go ahead and start pumping that in, see how many uh, quarts we can get before it starts flowing out of there. Then we'll go ahead and uh, cap it. And then uh, we'll start it. And I'll show you that process of checking the level there at certain temperatures. Get my tube in there and let's go ahead and uh, start pumping here. Okay, so there's one quart. Okay, right there is going to be two quarts. And you guys just take your time doing this. It'll start to hurt your hands and everything. All right, guys, so you can see it's starting to come out there. And that's uh, right at about three and a half quarts there. So I'll go ahead and uh, cap this. too tight because I know I'll probably have to add more here. All right guys so as you can see about half a quart there and I, I think I said three and a half quarts but actually that'll be uh, two and a half there. All right guys so with the fill plug in I'm gonna go ahead and start it and then I'll come back down and we'll pull the uh, fill plug We'll try to get some more fluid in there. And then uh, once it starts dribbling out, I'll go ahead and go back up there and uh, let's go ahead and check the transmission temp. And then uh, we'll see where we're sitting at. Okay, 
going pretty good. Go ahead and start pumping in. That bag is going to be three quarts. That there is going to be four quarts. Okay, so right there at four and a half quarts, you can see we got a dribble there. So I'll go ahead and uh, replace our fill cap here. All right, so back in the vehicle area, you can see we're at 104 degrees on the trans temp now. And what you want to do next is you're going to want to disable the traction control. So you can see the bottom left, that's off now. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and put it in reverse for five seconds. Neutral there. Turn off my parking aids there so it stops beeping. And then we'll go and drive for five seconds. Next, I'm going to go ahead and let off the brake and uh, we're going to try to get it into second gear. Again, my wheels are off the floor and everything because I'm on four jack stands. So those are going to go ahead and spin. So slowly let your foot off the brake here. And let's see if we can get in a second here. Get a little gas here. There we go, you can see the second there. Maybe five seconds of that. And then let's go ahead and go into first. See, we're back in first. And then slowly put your foot on the brake. And we'll go ahead and go and park. And then what you want to do next is you're going to go ahead and rev the engine up to 2,000 RPMs for 5 seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go back down below. We're still within our range because we need to be between uh, 86 and 122. Let's go ahead and pull our plug, plug down below there and uh, see if it's dribbling out. If it is, we'll let it uh, get down to a slow drip. 
And uh, if it's not coming out, then we need to add some more. So again, pull the plug. And you guys want to kind of be fast about this because that transmission tap is just going to keep going up. So pull our plug here and see if it comes out. And you can see we got a drip going on. So I'm going to go ahead and let that get down to a little dribble there. And then we'll put the fill plug on and we should be good. Because like I said, we pulled out just a little over four quarts and I put four and a half in. So that should be just about right. Uh, considering what's left over in the pan and what I kind of spilled out. So. All right guys, so I'm gonna call that good. I just went back up there really quick, checked the temp, and it's sitting at 120 right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and stick this on. Go ahead and tighten that. Go ahead and wipe this up. All right, so back up top here, you can see we're sitting at 132 degrees Fahrenheit now. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and run them through the gears again really quick here, uh, letting it sit for five seconds on the gears. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this get up to normal operating temperature, you know, 160 or above, 170 right around there. All right, guys, so as you can see, went ahead and uh, let it idle here for a while. Now we're sitting at, uh, looks like 186 degrees. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, I'll go ahead and shut it off and I'll let it sit overnight, cool down, and then in the morning, we'll go ahead and start it again, let it climb up to the uh, temperature range we need it to be at, and we'll check that level one more time just to be safe. All right guys, so as you can see, it's the next morning. Went ahead and let that sit overnight and cool down. And really quick here, I just wanna show you. So last night, we put in, uh, you can see there's four empty quarts here. And then on the fifth quart, we put in about a quarter of a quart because there would be halfway. So it looks like we put in four and a quarter quarts. And if you take a look to what we pulled out yesterday, you can see our four quart line right there. So we're a little bit above that. So I'd say we pulled out exactly uh, four and a quarter quart because you can see there's still a little bit in the drain pan originally. And then also on the transmission pan, you can see there's still a little bit of fluid in there. So I'd say all in all, we pulled out four and a quarter quart is what came out. And that's exactly what we put in. But uh, I just want to double check the level. So let's go ahead and uh, start it. We'll get it up to temp and we'll uh, check that level one more time. So again, I'll go ahead and start it, and uh, I haven't touched it. It's uh, still sitting on jack stands and is level and everything. So let me start it here. We'll check our temperature. As you can see, we're uh, actually right at 86 degrees because um, it is pretty warm out today. You can see it's sitting at 77 right now. And... Uh, so let's go ahead and go down below because we're within the uh, threshold of checking it. So let's go ahead and check that real quick. All right, so let me pull that plug. And again, we want to see a dripping out of there or a dribble and then we know we're at the right range. And also it's a good time to check for leaks since that sat overnight and you can see our pan's pretty much dry. So I think we're good on leads. And as you can see, we're not, uh, it's not dribbling out. So let me go ahead and grab some more fluid. And 
let me go ahead and start pumping some more in until we get a nice dribble coming out of it. Okay, so you can see it starting to dribble out there. Let me go ahead and pull this out of here. And like I said, it, it says in the instructions, it needs to be a nice uh, dribble just like that. So let that go out a little more. And I'm gonna call that good. So I'll go ahead and put our plug back in here. Tighten that up. Go ahead and wipe this down. And then just hit that with some brake cleaner. All right, so now you can see we're sitting at a 98 and climbing. Uh, so I think we're good. Let's go ahead and uh, check how much we put in. All right, so went ahead and shut it off here. And then as you can see, that little amount that I just put in, here's half a quart. So we're just right at, uh, looks to be four and a half quarts is what uh, we put in there. And then, like I said before, we were just a little bit over four, maybe four and a quarter. But again, I spilled a little bit. There's a little bit left in here. And then also whatever's left in the uh, filter there. So I think we're good sitting at uh, four and a half quarts. And then of course, go ahead and uh, put your skid plate on. And then you got a two different sizes of bolts on these if you didn't notice when you pulled them off. The short ones are gonna go uh, towards the back of the vehicle here. And tighten those up with your 13 millimeter. All right, so I think that's gonna wrap up the video. Uh, again, this was a 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Went ahead and replaced the eight speed transmission filter along with the pan and fluid. And uh, a lot of people are afraid to do this because there's so much uh, procedures involved. But uh, once you get down to it, it's really uh, pretty simple. Um, and again, I got maybe 300 bucks between the fluid, filter and pan. Uh, as where if you go to the dealership to have them do this, I think it's well over 600 to 700 bucks. Uh, so definitely worth it doing it yourself. And uh, you really can't go wrong. That's why I mentioned before, I like to measure what came out. Because if it was running just fine before the drain, and you put pretty much the same amount back in, you know it's going to be okay. Uh, and again, I bought 7 quarts, but really all I needed was uh, probably 5 quarts. But it's always safe to have a couple extra just in case, because you never know. Uh, people's vehicles could be different so again um, if you guys have any questions or comments uh, feel free to drop them down in there and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can but uh, if you haven't already subscribe to my channel check out my other videos uh, I did quite a bit of work to this Jeep alone so once I get those uploaded check out those videos and uh, I'll see you next time thanks for watching